Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawa Shai, Bahasham, Rakahakwadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahawa Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutations to you, sincere Akiam out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you, brothers, endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start it off with a clip from Wyon's YouTube channel titled Gravitas Putin Visits Iran as Ukraine War Intensifies. And the information that's going to be showed in this clip is just another example of biblical prophecy and biblical alliances being made right before your very eyes because Russia will be an ally of Iran and help them during World War III in the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat in that Middle Eastern region, the War of Armageddon in Joel chapter 3 verse 9. And it also states in Ezekiel chapter 38 that Russia is going to be a guard unto nations like Iran. This is Ezekiel chapter 38 and I'm going to start at verse 1. And the word of Yahweh came unto me saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog which is the biblical name for Russia, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And that's the Most High putting that old confrontational Soviet Union spirit back onto those Russian Edomites, which we can clearly see with their military operation in Ukraine, as well as them helping out Bashar al-Assad in Syria during the Syrian civil war. Russia's also been building up its military assets in that Arctic Ocean region, and they're beginning to deploy their hypersonic and other uh, nuclear capable weapons into military service. And as you've been seeing recently in the news, they're making a lot of threats towards the West with those nuclear weapons if they continue to intervene in their affairs in Ukraine. And best believe Russia will ultimately use those nuclear missiles on uh, the United States of America, which is biblically known as Babylon the Great. And I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields all of them handling swords, their military hardware, tanks, fighter jets, S-400s, S-500s, artillery pieces, helicopters, soldiers, them being gathered down into the Valley of Jehoshaphat or the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Verse 5, Persia, which is the ancient name for Iran, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer, which is speaking of Turkey, because Turkey is going to eventually betray the West and switch sides towards the Russians or Gog and his and all his bands, the house of Togerma of the North Quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company or your allies that are assembled unto thee and be thou a guard unto them. Point blank period. Gog or Russia is going to be a guard or ally unto nations like Persia or Iran during World War III. And like I just said, Gomer is eventually going to completely turn against the West and ally themselves with Russia. But let's get into this clip. And real quick, this is a fair use copyright disclaimer. I do not own any of the footage in this video, nor do I stand to gain from it monetarily. This video is simply for educational purposes. It seems like West Asia is the place to be. Last week, U.S. President Joe Biden dropped in. This week, it's the Russian President. Vladimir Putin is visiting Iran. He landed in the Iranian capital earlier today. Over the next few hours, he has four important engagements. First, a meeting with Iran's President, Ibrahim Raisi. Second, a conversation with the Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Third, 
a bilateral with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and finally Third, a bilateral with Turkish President Erdogan, Gomer, be thou a guard unto them as well. Finally, a tripartite summit, Erdogan, Raisi and Putin. They will hold, hold three ways. Russia, Iran, Turkey. It talks. It is called the Astana Dialogue. It focuses mainly on the Syrian war, but this time they'll have one more war to discuss. Now, why is this trip important? For starters, Putin is a wartime leader. This is his second foreign visit since the war began. His first was to Turkmenistan last month. And what does that tell you? Putin is betting on the partnership with Iran. He wants to forge a broad anti-West coalition, which brings us to the second reason. Russia and Iran have had a complicated relationship. During World War II, Iran was a neutral country. They did not support the Allies or the Axis powers. But they had something that both sides wanted, and that was oil. So in 1941, the Allies invaded Iran. Britain and the Soviet Union led that campaign. Cut to 2022, both countries have changed dramatically. Iran is now an Islamic Republic, and the Soviet Union does not even exist. So relations are improving slowly. Just recently, you had the president of Belarus say that them aligning with Russia again is going to bring back the, the vestiges of the Soviet Union again back in Ezekiel chapter 38. And I will put hooks into thy jaws and turn thee back. The Most High putting these Russian Edomites back in that Soviet Union spirit. Slowly but steadily. You could say Russia and Iran are partners, but not allies. Their relationship is based on convenience, like their shared hatred for the, of the West, or their role in the Syrian war. There is very little ideological congruence. Putin's objective is to change that, to upgrade Iran from a partner to an ally. The question is, what's in it for them, for Iran? What does Iran get in return? And it doesn't matter at the end of the day what little differences they may have. As it says in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1, the king's heart or mind is in the hand of uh, Yahweh. He turneth it whithersoever he will. The Most High is putting the thoughts on the minds of these leaders, like uh, of Russia and Iran, to become allies to fight against the United States and her allies during World War III. And nothing will happen to keep these biblical alliances from coming to their fulfillment or these biblical prophecies. Turn. Two things. Number one, a bulwark against the expanding Arab-Israeli bloc. Saudi Arabia may not recognize Israel today or tomorrow, but they will eventually. Let's pull that back a little bit. Against the expanding Arab-Israeli from a partner to an ally. The question is, what's in it for them, for Iran? What does Iran get in return? Two things. Number one, a bulwark against the expanding Arab-Israeli bloc. Saudi Arabia may not recognize Israel today or tomorrow, but they will eventually. And where would that leave Iran? Alone and vulnerable in the region. So this alliance with Russia is important to push back against the emerging West Asian order. Iran's alliance with Russia creates a bulwark against hostilities from Iran, Russia, or Gog being a guard unto Persia or Iran. It's also a part of biblical prophecy. This is Jeremiah 49 verse 20. Therefore hear the counsel of Yahweh that he had taken against Edom. The biblical Edomites are known today as these so-called white people. Your Americans, uh, the, the British, the Europeans, the Russians, etc., etc., And his purposes that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. And that least of the flock is speaking of those Amalekite Edomites calling themselves Israelis over in the Holy Land right now. They're not the true people of the book. The true children of Israel are known as the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans today. But as it says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. And these 1948ers, as I'll call them, are constantly pushing for war against Iran because they want to balkanize, along with the United States, they want to balkanize the Middle East so the state of Israel will be the strongest power in there with uh, no pushback against them. So they're going to do something to provoke Iran to attack them or just outright attack, attack Iran to start that war. 
and it's going to draw out nations like the United States of America and other NATO countries in on the side of Israel, but who it's going to draw in on the side of Iran are nations like Russia, who's going to be a guard unto them, China and her other allies. And as uh, she just said, Iran further strengthening their ties with Russia builds up a bulwark or a protection for them against 1948 or aggression. Number two, a fellow anti-Western crusader. Both Russia and Iran are heavily sanctioned by the West. Their economies need some sort of lifeline. So why not each other? Russia-Iran trade was up 81% last year. A lot of this trade is done in local currency. Russia buys in rubles, Iran buys in rial. They have successfully de-dollarized bilateral trade. Now, Putin may dominate the headlines today, but he's not the only world leader who's present in Tehran. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is also in town. He met with President Raisi and Ayatollah Khamenei, both talks focused on Syria. Erdogan is planning a military operation in northern Syria. His plan is twofold. First, drive the Kurdish fighters away from the border, and second, resettle Syrian refugees in the region. Russia and Iran are trying to stop this. Both countries support Bashar al-Assad's regime in Damascus. They cannot stand by if Turkey attacks him. So Iran's supreme leader asked Erdogan to reconsider his decision. He said a so Turkish attack would be... De so again, a meeting between Russia and Iran and Turkey also getting involved as well. Detrimental to security. And chances are Putin will say more of the same. But will Erdogan be convinced? His reaction in Tehran suggests he won't. The PJK, PKK, PYD, YPG, FETO terrorist organizations are serious nuisances to both countries. They are nuisances that disrupt the calm of the countries where they are present. Therefore, we need to continue to lead a struggle against them in solidarity. And again, the king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh, he moveth it whithsoever he will. Turkey is kind of a firebrand and they're doing things constantly that shows them uh, moving more towards Russia than uh, changing their mind and moving more towards the West. But according to biblical prophecy, they're ultimately gonna align themselves with Russia, Gomer having Gog being a guard unto them. He's playing a game of brinkmanship on both sides. Remember NATO's Nordic expansion plan? Erdogan had agreed to it. He agreed to support Sweden and Finland's membership to the NATO, but now he's threatening to freeze the entire thing. Same with Syria. And he agreed to Finland and Sweden joining NATO. And for a, a little bit, things seem like, oh, Turkey's getting back in line and moving more towards uh, NATO. But as I just said, he's looking to freeze that agreement constantly flip-flopping flip back and forth. But again, ultimately, Turkey is going to align themselves with Russia during World War III. Yeah. Russia and Iran had changed the tide of the war, but now Erdogan is threatening a new offensive. Sounds like crude diplomacy. Well, that's the thing about brinkmanship. If you pull it off, you're a hero. If you don't, you end up looking rash and foolish. The jury is still out on Erdogan. But coming back to Iran... Can but biblical prophecy isn't out on Erdogan or Turkey. That's it with this clip. Now I'm gonna go to my second clip also on Wyon's YouTube channel. And again, this is a fair use copyright disclaimer. I do not own any of the footage in this video, nor do I stand to gain from it monetarily. This video is simply for educational purposes. And it reads, Turkey's President Erdogan threatens to withdraw from accord. And of course, we know that Persia is the ancient name for Iran, but just to show that Gomer is speaking of Turkey in Ezekiel chapter 38, this is a really good book on a lot of the history and customs and practices of the ancient Israelites called the Israelites by BSG Iserlin. Here's an image and I'm gonna go to page 22 and 23 of uh, the Israelites, which shows an ancient world map of that Mediterranean and Middle Eastern region with uh, ancient names. 
here's a image of it. You can see, to get it to focus, the land of Israel right there. We've got Saudi Arabia, and we've got Turkey right here. You can see the Mediterranean, the Black Sea, and what, what name do we have in there? Gomer in Turkey. And now I'm gonna go to a modern day map of the Mediterranean in the Middle East. Turkey, or Gomer, the Black Sea, the Mediterranean, Saudi Arabia, Israel, you get the point. Turkey has been uh, one of, on uh, Finland's heels since quite a few months now. Ankara is throwing obstacles as Helsinki desperately tries to attain a NATO membership. In the latest, the President Recep Erdogan has threatened to freeze Finland's bid. Listen to this before I tell you more. Şartlarımızı yerine getirmek için gereken adımları atmamaları halinde... Once again, I would like to remind everyone that if these countries do not take the necessary steps to meet our requirements, we will freeze the process. What the main opposition or the other little opposition say about strange things like this or that does not concern us as long as we are the ruling party in this country. Biz bu ülkede iktidarda olduğumuz sürece bizi bağlamaz. What promises is Erdogan referring to? Well, you see, Turkey had issues all along the day the Nordic nations decided to give up on their neutrality and decided to join the military alliance. Turkey raised objections. Ankara opposed because it believed that Finland, Sweden support terror groups, as it says. But in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, European leaders made Turkey, Sweden and Finland sign an accord. While Ankara promised to lift its veto, the Nordic nations pledged when it comes to counterterrorism. So it sounded like uh, Turkey was getting back in line with the West in NATO and allowing for uh, Sweden and Finland's membership in the NATO. ...and arms exports, and now Erdogan is threatening, backtracking, if he sees the other side lacking. The United States was quick to react. However, it downplayed the entire warning and said that Washington has extended strong consensus and support to both nations. And being a key NATO member, it is also trying to make the membership process swift and efficient. And like I've been saying all throughout the video, the only thing that matters is biblical prophecy. For a time, it may seem like Turkey's really strong with dealing with, the, with NATO in the West, but ultimately, they're going to turn against the West and ally themselves with Gog or Russia and allow them to be a guard unto them, as it says in Ezekiel chapter 38. Together, Turkey, Finland, Sweden, uh, they signed a uh, trilateral memorandum uh, in Madrid to set this process in motion. The United States uh, will continue to work with those three countries uh, to see to it that this accession process and uh, uh, ratification here and around the world is as swift and efficient as it can possibly be. Finland has time and again stated that it will not let Turkey dictate terms to the country. Erdogan's warning comes at a time when the Finnish Prime Minister is on a personal trip. She is currently in Italy with her family for a summer vacation. Now I'm going to close it out in Obadiah. I'm going to start at verse 1 and jump around a, book, a bit. And the whole book of Obadiah is dedicated to you Edomites. As the header reads, Edom will be humbled. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord Yahweh concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from Yahweh, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. But now I'm going to jump down to verse 7 which is more specifically dealing with the United States of America's allies turning against her. All the men of thy confederacy or your allies, which uh, Turkey seems to be at the moment, have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. And you had Turkey eventually 
concede to allowing Finland and Sweden to joining NATO, but now they're making a stir again, saying they may uh, freeze the whole process altogether. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. A turkey has received a lot of uh, benefits from the West and the United States of America, but they're ultimately gonna deceive her, prevail against her, and lay that ultimate wound under her by turning against the US in the West and allying themselves with Gog or Russia during World War III. There is none understanding in him. So that's it with this video. And with this video, I hope you sincere Akim and Akwath were edified. Just keep strong as we can clearly see we're almost out of this final wicked captivity of the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites. And as always, I'm going to say Abad Babal, Kwam Yasharala, and until next time, Shalom.